There are many asters that are native to Oklahoma. One of those is the fleabane daisy. This one flowers considerably earlier than many of the other aster group members. Uh, this one produces a very distinguished yellow center with white petals on the outside. And this can be mowed down to a very low height of cut, so it's not going to be mowed out uh, of the lawn and be extinguished by just mowing. Or it can be three to four feet in tall, de depending upon the amount of moisture present. What's important to remember is that we can have plants coming up in the middle of the lawn and maybe think of them as a weed, but in fact they can be an adventitious sport off of the root system. In this case, this plant here is actually western soapberry and we're under the canopy of western soapberry trees. So uh, look around you, many times you'll see your land desirable landscape material sending up an adventitious shoot and you might think of it as a broadleaf weed. We can simply cut these off at, at root level. We wouldn't want to spray these because it might actually affect the health of the desirable tree. Our next plant that we're going to cover is yellowwood sorrel. This can behave as a short-lived perennial or, or biennial if we have a very mild winter, but most of the time it's going to behave like a summer annual. You'll see the seedlings early on in the spring and if it's not too hot and dry during the summer, it will survive the summer. In other cases, it might wilt down and actually germinate again in late summer. Uh, it's distinguished by its typical oxalis flower, uh, yellow wood sorrel. And as a child, I actually used to eat those flowers. I don't know that I can recommend it, but many times you'll find folks that uh, ate tender sorrel shoots and sorrel flowers, but uh, we're not recommending it here. Our next plant that we're going to talk about is wild carrot. Also gets called uh, Queen Anne's Lace. Here we can see it bolting. It does have an extensive root and if this were allowed to go to full height, which might be four feet in height under moist conditions, it would produce a uh, very large white inflorescence. And some people actually like that while others don't. Also this is a plant that some folks can be photosensitive to the oils of the plant, if they contact your skin, and then in the presence of st strong sunlight, some people can have a, a very uh, serious allergic reaction to it. So it's something to think about in the case of either wild carrot or wild parsnip. This plant is called sticky chickweed. It has very small heart-shaped leaves, much smaller than common chickweed. And here you see the very typical white flower of the chickweeds. Sticky chickweed. Next to it is common chickweed, which usually has larger leaves, heart-shaped leaves. The flowers will be very, very similar. These are both native to Oklahoma, and they are winter annual broadleaves. Next to the common chickweed is an example of speedwell. There's thyme-leaved speedwell and also corn speed well that are common in Oklahoma as lawn weeds. Both of those species are winter annuals as well. Now the speed wells will have a very light blue flower, but uh, today this one, the flower is not very visible upon. The next plant I'd like to cover is smooth vetch. It's an example of a winter annual broadleaf with a pinnately compound leaf. These are the individual leaflets on the plant. It also has tendrils which allow it to climb up some shorter structures. There's an example of the ten curling tendril which allows it to climb up uh, either local woody plants for a foot or two or uh, any other plants in the field with it. There's a closely related species called hairy vetch and these two winter annual broadleaves while they are in the same family as crown vetch these are winter annuals whereas crown vetch is a perennial in Oklahoma. Now these vetches are examples of legumes. They can help build soil fertility through a symbiotic relationship and nitrogen fixation. They're also, because of that, used as winter annual forage and also as a winter annual cover crop. So they're an example of a plant that can be desirable in the garden as a winter annual cover crop and yet if they're actually out in the turf area we would consider them a lawn weed. Again, this is smooth vetch, a winter annual broadleaf. This plant here is perennial white clover. 
it's introduced from Europe and in a turf scenario it can be both a desirable plant or a weed depending upon your perspective. The earliest turf books that were written in the United States in the 1900s actually recommended mixes of different turf grasses with perennial white clover as a nitrogen fixing component. So those, there's actually examples documented where it was used as a desirable species. In the garden situation, we might also use it for a cover crop as a soil builder, but it, in many cases in Bermuda grass or even tall fescue, folks will consider it out of place and as undesirable and as a weed. It is a perennial. It can form a lot of seed and many of the seed don't germinate in one year. So you can completely clean up white clover with a herbicide program and then several years later you'll see more germination of the seed. And it is an example of a legume so you will find the nitrogen fixing nodules on the root system. This very shade tolerant moist soil loving plant is common violet here located in the moist shade. And many times we don't have a turf grass that can do as well in a moist shade as what perennial violet is. So it's an example of a plant that could be considered a lawn weed, but if you can't provide a good turf grass ground cover, violet is there to perform for you. The reason that it's so important to be able to identify different plants or weeds is that they are diagnostic in themselves. Different weeds have different growing requirements and actually they can help tell you about your soil and climate conditions in your lawn such that you may need to improve soil conditions for moisture or fertility because different weeds have different requirements. One of my favorite resources available for purchase for weed identification in, in southern turf grasses is the book Weeds of Southern Turf Grasses available from the University of Florida and the University of Georgia. It's now in about its third reprinting and it has over 200 commonly uh, found turf, gra uh, turf grass weeds in the southern United States. Of course, there's many free resources available on the internet that are updated on a regular basis also. So choose a resource to help you with identification of your lawn weeds, and in so doing, you'll learn more about how to build and improve upon your integrated turf grass management program.